Hi everybody, my name is Denny, and today I'm going to be changing the oil on my 2008 Smart for Two. But there are some things you should probably have in place before you get started. So uh, here's what I use. I'm going to start out with a, a pair of uh, ramps, car ramps. We're going to use those to get the car up so we can get underneath easily enough. Um, as far as oil goes, um, Smart recommends Mobile One and uh, synthetic oil. So uh, that's what I'm going with here. I have a 10W30 uh, Mobile One. You're also going to want uh, maybe a plastic bag of some sort so you can put the old filter in it. Of course, you're going to also need a new oil filter. This is a Fram uh, Tough Guard uh, 66, uh, TG6607. Uh, it costs about five bucks over at Walmart. You're going to need a pan to drain your oil in. Now, I used to use this one, but now I have this new thing and uh, I'm interested in trying that out. Uh, for little spills and Kleenex, some paper towels. You need one of these little um, uh, little rubber band wrench. Um, here's something you probably didn't think of. A bungee cord, okay? Why do we need a bungee cord? Stay tuned and you'll find out. When you're pouring the oil into the engine, you're definitely gonna need uh, some sort of a funnel. So have a funnel handy. Uh, a wrench. You're going to need a wrench, and I'm not sure what the size is, but I'll let you know in a minute. Now, if you don't have a metric wrench that fits, then one of these uh, one-size-fits-all jobs will do the trick just fine. Um, this is a felt-tip marker, okay? I'll show you what that you're going to use that for in a minute. You might need a rag for cleanup. How about some disposable vinyl gloves? These I are also great. have a big chunk of cardboard. I'll show you what that's used for in just a minute. Now I think it's time to put the car up on the ramps. I'm going to start by placing my ramps right under those tires. Make sure they're even and uh, straight. Then we're going to very carefully back the car onto the ramp. Now don't forget, once your car is backed up onto the ramps, be sure to set your parking brake. Once the car is up on the ramp, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to place that piece of cardboard underneath. Uh, the reason for the cardboard is to catch any oil spills. You don't want to mess up your driveway. Plus it's much more comfortable than laying on the pavement. So here we are under the car, and if you look up right here, this is our oil filter, all right? And right over here is the drain plug. Now this drain plug is enormous. It needs a 24, 25 millimeter wrench, which I don't have anything that big. So I'm using the old uh, knuckle buster here, which will do the top job just fine. Uh, I've got my drain pan over here. I'm gonna open it up and uh, I'll show you how all this works. But I mean, okay. Now I've got, I hope everybody can see this. There's the nut right there for the oil pan. And I got my, I got a slightly larger wrench because the last one uh, was just, there's a little too much oompa on here. And I've already loosened it up with this thing. So, now I've got my catch pan right here, and I'm going to make sure that it's right underneath this filler, I mean this drain, and I'm going to very slowly start to back it out. Now, it's not going to fall out. I'm going to wait for it to start trickling, and I'm just going to let it trickle. I don't know if you can see that or not. But, uh, here. You can see the oil draining right here. And uh, I'm just going to let it go real nice and slow. I don't want to take this nut all the way out because it'll just make a gusher. So I'm just going to let it go until it slows way down. And then I'll remove the, the nut the rest of the way and uh, show you there's a little screen at the end of this nut. So uh, just wait for it to 
to drain out. While it's doing that, I'm gonna get the uh, um, the wrench that I'm gonna use to remove the uh, filter. All right, the oil draining process is moving right along. You can see it's still coming down. I'm gonna try and, you know what, I'm not wearing my gloves yet. Better do that before I start getting nasty. Okay, got the gloves. Makes things a lot easier. Gonna pull this drain out a little further, a little further, and let it hang there. The nut is all the way out, but uh, the screen is holding it in place. So now the last little bit of oil is gonna drain out. And I'm gonna use a paper towel to keep my gloves and that nut clean. I can probably take this all the way out now. Benny, be quiet. My dog is trying to help me with this. Okay, now you can see that there's a, I don't know if you can see that, can you see that? All right, so as I was saying, it never fails, something is gonna disrupt me. But right here you can see at the, uh, the end of the uh, filler, there is like a screen. Okay, so when you go to take this uh, this filler out, uh, not filler, the drain plug, I'm sorry, drain plug. When you go to take the drain plug out, you got this screen on here, so you really don't have to take it all the way out. You can just kind of back it out and let it dangle there like that, and the oil will come right out. So now I'm ready to put it back in. I've got enough of that oil out of there. So let me just pick up the last little drop right here. And I'm gonna put the wrench back on there. And uh, yeah, put a little snug on it. Not too much. I don't know why. It's like they tighten up over time, you know. Okay, just a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna move the drain pan back. I'm also gonna move the camera, I hope. Okay, now it's time to do the filter. So I'm gonna move the drain pan underneath the filter. I use this little rubber band wrench, which just fits on, and you can tighten or flip it the other way. Oop, let me just back it off a little. Snug it up, and then you can loosen, just like that, okay? So once it's loose, same thing, I'm just gonna turn it until it starts draining or dribbling here it comes and this is where the plastic bag comes in because once I drain this filter I'm gonna to want to put it right into a plastic bag so I don't get oil everywhere so I'm gonna get the plastic bag right now okay it stopped draining but that doesn't mean it's empty there's still oil in the filter so you're very carefully gonna unscrew it all the way and once it comes off I'm going to turn it over now the nice thing about this catch thing is it's got a screen so I can just put that on there like that keeping my gloves clean And it's also time for the new filter. So let me pop that open. And one of the things you're supposed to do with a new filter is you're supposed to oil the O-ring that goes around here. Now, a lot of times people, the purists, if you're a purist, use, use the new oil. And it's like, geez, this stuff isn't that bad, you know? I'm gonna use a little bit of this oil here just to lubricate this uh, O-ring on the filter. And then I'll put the new filter on. Just like that. And a little snug, not too tight. You don't wanna do anything over tight. All right, the old filter old filter take that thing 
I'm going to put my hand down into this plastic bag, and grab it like that, and then bring the bag over the filter, and no mess. Nice and clean. Ah. So I'm almost done being underneath the car. Um, all I gotta do is put the cover on my catch pan and uh, then I'm gonna take the car off the jack stands. Now a lot of people feel that you shouldn't operate the engine without any oil in it, but it's gonna be for such a short amount of time, it's not gonna do any harm. So first things first, let me get my catch pan out of here. Put the lid on that, make sure it's on tight. Don't want to drip. We'll get the cardboard out of here and uh, ready to move on. Now it's time to take the stands off from underneath the car. Now back it back into position. It's time to put the new oil in. Okay, I'm sure I'll be criticized for running the engine without oil in it. Okay, back here we have the engine compartment and underneath this mat is uh, access to the engine. So, I'm going to loosen this up, we'll take this cover out of here and uh, so here's where the bungee cord comes into place. Alright, I'm going to I just need to hold this piece back. So I'm just going to hook on to something relatively solid here and hook it right onto the seat belt. Just keeps that up and out of the way for me. We are looking down into the engine compartment. Here you have your oil fill and this yellow is your dipstick. Uh, before you pull these things out, it might be a good idea just to make sure there's no dust hanging around them that's going to fall down inside and dirty up your brand new filter. So I'm just going to clean that off a little bit, open her up, clean up around it, anything I can't get off. And of course the dipstick, dipstick is right here. While I'm wiping, might as well wipe this off too. Okay. Hang on. Okay. So, time to put three and a half quarts or 3.3 liters of oil down into the engine. On the edge, this is a five quart bottle of oil. So if this is where my marker comes in, okay, I'm gonna use this felt tip marker. Right up here, that's that's the full marker, the bottle. Oh, right. I need three and a half quarts of oil. So this side is quarts, this side is liters. If this is five liters, then this is four, this is three, this is two, and this is one. Okay, so if I'm gonna use three and a half, that's one, two, three and a half. Right there. So when I when I have this much oil left, that's how I know I've got three and a half liters, uh, I'm sorry, three and a half quarts of oil into the car. So now it's time to start pouring. Go. 
half a quart. That ought to do it. You know what? Just a, just a teeny bit. I don't want to underfill it. I'd rather overfill than underfill. Okay, so now we'll put the cap back on. Check our dipstick. Wipe it off first. Run it down in and out again. And not even sure where I see where the level is. Oh yeah, we're right up there. Matter of fact, I did go over just a tad. But like I said, I'd rather have too much than not enough. So the oil's all set. That's it for my oil change, just a matter of putting the car back together. Now it's time to put the engine cover back on. So when you do that, just make sure you get the tabs, get the, uh, the little tabs in place. And uh, there we go. Once it lines up, the pin goes in place. And uh, then you can tuck in your carpeting again, soundproofing, whatever you want to call this stuff. That's it. Ooh. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye. I should have done that before I made the video.